Hi guys, I'm Su Yuan from my second year PhD student at Shanghai Jiao Tong University. Today I would like to share my recent work on TensorIR, an abstraction for tensorized program optimization. First of all, I'd like to thank all collaborators because they are also important to this project. I cannot finish it without them. They are Bo Han, Jun Ru, Rui Hang, Hong Yi, Wu Wei, Zi Hao, and Tianqi. They come from SJTU, OctoML, CMU, and UDEF. Now, let's back to the talk. TensorIR aims to be a second generation scheduled infrastructure of TVM stack, which is designed for tensorized programs. Now let's talk about the motivation. Recent years, machine learning and hardware changed a few times. Before 2016, we usually use CPU as our major target. After 2016, deep learning and neural networks appears, and it requires huge computation. So GPU becomes popular. Around 2020, with the network growing much heavier, GPU is still not enough on both performance and power efficiency. So TPU or NPU appears. The true reason of the hardware change is the computation pattern is different. CPU is scholar-based computing, while GPU works well on vector computing. However, TPU designed for tensor or matrix computing. Note that the GPU I mentioned here is only considered traditional GPUs before the Volta architecture. I personally regard new GPUs with tensor cores or matrix cores are kind of TPU or MPU. And now, so many companies have designed their own TPUs. The first is Google, NVIDIA. And now I know that like AMD, Intel, Apple, ARM, are trying to build their own TPU or MPUs, together with some, even with some startup companies. They have different back and different behaviors, like some hardware can compute math more, and some others can compute a total com 2D operators natively. They have different storage, different APIs, everything is different. It's good news that we can see so many companies are working on high performance and power efficiency chips, especially on machine learning, machine learning domain. However, it brings big troubles to compilers. For example, tensor computer chips are domain-specific hardware, are not generally general-purpose chips, which means we need to call the API explicitly. For example, we need to call the tensor core by calling the MMA sync, MMA sync, MMA load matrix to move the data and do the computing. That means that we different a, different hardware we have different APIs, and we need to op optimize different workload with different backend every time. The second thing is that. More hardware means more effort we need to make. It's hard or even impossible to deploy every operator on every backend manually. So we need to have an infrastructure to help us to do it. It's best to automatically do it, does it? So is that any solutions? That is TensorIR. After talking about the motivation, let's look at a very key conception, tensorized program. We have no another similar name, tensor program, which is different from the tensorized program. Tensor program means that programs compute tensors. However, tensorized program is a subset of the tensor program. It uses the tensor hardware and the user tensor intrinsic explicitly in the program. They are tensorized program. 
So in this slide, I will show a typical tensorizer program example here. It contains three parts. The first thing is the loop nesting, as it is necessary for all tensor programs. The second thing is special memory scope buffer, and always it's multidimensional. Tensorizer hardware usually have its own storage scopes to store the data. For example, NVIDIA tensor cores have a special storage scope called fragment. We need to use the API load matrix to move the data from GDDR to the memory scope fragment. And inside the fragment, we can do the computing and memory sync. And we need to use store matrix sync to move the result outside to the shared memory or the global memory. Okay, the second thing, the, or the last thing, is the opaque tensorized body. Different, different from the scholar computing, tensorized intrinsic is only use only one instructions to do a range of computing. For example, here we use the MMSync to do 16 by 16 matrix multiplications. Only one instructions. On the other side, it is opaque because it cannot be analyzed automatically by the language or by the program. Because different APIs have different behaviors, and we can, it is not be signaled, so we cannot directly operate it, or we cannot schedule them. So in practice, we usually have three major challenges when deploying models to tensor hardware. The first thing is how to write, or how to write a runnable program on tensor hardware. The second thing is how to optimize. After we can make it runnable on the hardware, how to utilize the hardware, how to make it performance and power efficiency. And the second thing is how to customize. We usually have models can run on CPU and GPU, but if we want to integrate it, integrate it on a customer hardware, like a startup MPUs, how can we do it? How can we make it runnable and how can we make it utilize our hardware? That's three challenges. To understand the challenge, we first see two popular methods on writing tensorizer program, and then we know why these challenges are here. The first thing is manually write it, just like writing C++, C++ program or a CUDA kernel, or even assembling code. This method is widely used by vendor-provided libraries like Kublas and QDNN. On the other side, there is another way that TVM uses called auto-generate. We de declare the computation algorithm by something abstract, by some abstractions, like TVM uses the tensor expressions diff to define the algorithm, and then use the schedule or other optimized method algorithm to generate the final program. These are two popular methods. Manually writing is the simplest way to write a runnable progress, no matter which the backend is. Because at least we have an API and we can make it, make it runnable. So I see that it is easy to write and easy to customize their green face. However, it contains the one biggest problem. It's extremely hard to utilize the hardware. It's extremely hard to op optimize the program. Only companies like NVIDIA and Intel will hire thousands of engineers and experts to write high-performance kernel or high-performance li libraries. Although they have hired so many people, there's only a small part of operators like the COM2D, Matt Moore, and common operators are performant. The rest are still have spaces to improvement. On the other side, 
TVM used another way to generate tensorize pro to generate programs. We use TE to define algorithms of the operators and then use schedule to optimize it. With the schedule primitives, we can easily to make our runnable programs more efficient and more powerful. However, the things are different on the tensor part works. Because tensor expressions are defined by scholars, so the only way to make it run on tensor intrinsic or tensor hard words is tensorize. However, tensorize is based on pattern matching. We recognize this part of the computing possibly right does the same things as the tensor intrinsic does. We can use it. However, this method brings much troubles to make a program natively scheduled by tensor expressions. So it's hard to make it runnable. We can use the TE schedule to make a runnable program on CUDA calls, but it's hard to make it run on tensor calls. Besides, different hardware have different features, preferring different programs. However, the TE and the schedules are totally the same for the all possible backends. So the generative programs are similar between backends. Although the, the schedule space covers the best performance of the popular devices like the Intel CPUs and the Nvidia GPUs, we can get the performance result. But it usually cannot get the, the wanted program to those emergency hardware because the schedule primitive cannot transform the program to the wanted program. So is that possible to combine these two methods together? The answer is yes, that is tensor error. We can write a tensorizer program by human and optimize it, use the schedule, and even automatically scheduling, maybe next year. Okay, by this method, we can combine the advantage of these two methods. Easy to write, and easy to explore the search space. Also, help with the help of the new design primitives. It's easy to add customer primitives to extend the schedule space to cover the best performance point of the specific hardware. That is TensorIR. So TensorIR defines a new program paradigm. Write a program and optimize it. Previously, we can write a program or we can optimize our tensor expression but now we can write a program and optimize it. To address these three challenges, we have three different parts to solve it. We have TVM script to write the program, to make it runnable, to write a tensorized program with tensor intrinsic to run on the tensor hardware. We have interactive schedule on tensorized body to make it optimal to opt optimize the tensorized program written by TVM script. And also we have decoupled the new design primitives to make it easy to cover the every point in the search space. Three parts together we call tensorl. Then I will introduce the technical point of the tensorl. First, let's write a program with TVM script. TVM script is a Python AST based language that re represents a piece of TVM IR. It is a round trippable syntax, which means that we can print the TVM IR into TVM script and pass it back to the TVM IR's data structures. Meanwhile, we can write any kinds of program as long as it can be represented by TVM IR. Note that any program such as if we want to have if or while in the TVM script, that's okay. It grows the flexibility than tensor expressions. 
we choose Python as our base syntax since it's widely used in machine learning and data science, and most people are familiar with it. However, please note that there is a very important thing that TVN script only take advantages of Python AST, but not the Python interpreters, which means the function will not be executed by Python environment, but only will be passed by the Python AST and TVM parser. And any variables defined in Python cannot be used in TVM script because it is not used a Python interpreter, so it cannot get the variable information from the TVM up, uh, sorry, from the Python environment. Back to the program. There are three major parts of typical tensor programs. Multi-dimensional buffers, loop nestings, and computational blocks. Block is a new conception we define in TensorIR. We will introduce it later, but now we just somehow regard it as, it as a computational body. So this slide, I will show the design goal zero. We can write tensor program, or tensor, we can write tensor program with Python AST in Python AST based syntax. As we mentioned before, TensorR is designed for tensorized computation, and block is such a tool. We can use block to represent a vectorized or tensorized computation. In this case, block B is a vectorized block, which adds eight elements at one time, while the block C is a traditionally scalar block. This is one of our design goals. Treat the tensorized computation as our first class citizen. We can directly write the tensorized program and schedule it in our TVM script and tensorIR. Although we have used the block in previous slides, I will introduce the block in this slide detailing. A block contains three major parts. Block iteration domains, block access regions, or we call the read write regions, are producing consuming regions. That's the same things. And uh, the block body. So let's talk about the block iterations first. Each block contains several iterators, which together defines the iteration space required by these blocks. Note that the iteration domains must be continuously. Besides the iteration space, there are also iteration types here. There are three common used iteration types, spatial, reduce, and scan. In this example, we define three iterators, vy, vx, and vk. The first two iterators are spatial axes, which means it can be executed parallelly without any dependencies. The last one, VK, is a reduced axis. It's also like the K axis in the gym, while the previous two axes, like the I and J axis in gym, they are spatial and the K is the reduced axis. They are easy to understand. And the scan is really used. The axis is, must be executed in order. We may use it in the LSTM or any other Order the executed programs, like a i is equal to the a i minus one. That's an example of scan. Okay, that's all the block iterators. Another important piece of information for block is the buffer access informations, or we call buffer block access regions. Each block has its read and write regions. Based on those read-write regions, we can determine the producer-consumer relationship between the blocks. For example, one block writes the buffer A and the last and the second block reads the buffer A. So the second block is depends on the first block. It's easy to understand. Okay, 
the last thing is the block body. The block body is just a piece of a statement and uh, indicates how the block executes. The only thing that the block bo body we need to know is the block body can only use the block iterators and the variable defines inside the block. On the other side, we, we cannot use the loop nesting outside the block. For example, in this case, we cannot use the YO, XO, and KO because they are outside the block. As for why we have this requirement, I will talk about it later. And just uh, now, we can just uh, um, think that it is required for a schedulable block. Okay, think about one question. Why we need to that requirement? And why we need to design these block signatures? Okay, block signatures means the block iterations and the block access regions. The red part in the figure is the block signatures. Why we need that? Because block signatures is the abstraction of the block body. It defines the iterator's domain and it requires the iteration's domain and the, its access regions. This, this block, we can just uh, look at the block signature. It reads buffer A, buffer B, and write buffer C. We don't care about how it reads the buffer A, how we read the buffer B, and how we write the buffer C. To, for outside blocks, for us, all side other statement. It only needs to know block use this data and produce this data. This is somehow like declaring a function and separate the inside implementations from outside. The only thing we need to provide is the parameters, or here we call the iterators, iterator values, and the data. Here we is the buffer data. We must provide enough buffer, enough data stored in buffer A and buffer B, so the block will produce the correct data stored in buffer C. Blocks also protect the independence of the inside bodies. No matter whether outside loop nesting is changed, the block body can execute it correctly because it will not use the outside loop nesting bars. And the only change is the block iterator values. It changes and it changes the how the block executed. So this is our a major design goal. Isolate the inside computation, cancel by computation from outside external loops. That's a block. A kind of isolation. So with, with these isolations, tensor R divides the optimization problem into two separate parts, loop nesting and computational body, or we call the computational block. When transforming loop nestings with the help of block isolations, we don't care about the internal implementation of the block. No matter the blocks use scalar-based computing or opaque tensor computing, they are the same for the outside part. And when we look at inside the block, we don't care about how other outside loop nesting are organized. We can map the tensorized body into different implementations. In this case, we show that the option zero and option one. We can either use a four by four metamorph microkernel or directly use scalar computing to compute it. It's, it depends on the block inside part. And also we can combine these two operations, transforming outside block and transforming inside block in any order, and finally generate the program we want. 
divide the problem into two parts, outside loop nesting and block inside. We can schedule and optimize them separately. That's hence I R. So here is a typical example that transforming for tensorized computation. I will show the step one by one. Here, block B is a tensorized computation, which read the buffer A and write read the buffer A and B and write buffer C. You can regard this block B as a typical mat matrix math more kernel. And we want to compute at the producer block of A under the loop K. Let's see what will happen. The first thing we will find the dependency of a buffer A. Okay, block B produce it and block oh, sorry, block A produce it and block B consume it. So there is a data dependency. Second, we will find the block B consume region under the loop K. Based on the block signature here, one iteration is need four by four regions. We execute the block one time, it needs four by four regions because the block B is a tensorized block. It contains tensorized intrinsic. Okay, under the loop K, there is four times iterations on iterator VY and only one time iterations on VK. You can see the example here. So the consumer region is 16 by 4 because the iteration region is 4 by 1 and each iteration consumes 4 by 4 region. So the consumer region, it reads the, the buffer A's region is 16 by 4. Okay, the third step. Since block A is a scalar block, so it needs to repeat 16 by 4 times iterations to produce the necessary region. Because the block B requires the 16 by 4 regions, so we need to make a block A produce necessary part of the data. So it needs to repeat 16 by 4 times. Okay, then the last step is to generate a loop nesting 16 by 4. As we look, as we hear, is the I and J. And uh, put the producer A block to the correct position. There's four steps to do a computer at. Okay, let's remind the, the let's take a look at this producing. We don't need to investigate the block body. In this four step, I will not see the block body. What is a block body is? It's explicitly we we don't care about what is block B does. And we only think that we only think we know that the block A is it is produce only one element of A. So we don't need to investigate a block body as the only information we need is a block signature. So even the block body is opaque access. We mentioned that opaque access, we cannot analyze it by the program. So even the block body is opaque access, like tensor core MMA intrinsic or any other in tensor intrinsic, we can still schedule it because we don't care about the body. This is how we transform for tensorized computation. This is our design goal, enable loop transformations of tensorized computation body. Okay, in this slide I will talk about uh, empirical schedule. TE schedule is based on halide IR, IR, and its core is based on the static declarations mode of schedule trees. In the early stage, it declares a several of primitives and output of target IR together when the code is generated in the one step 
TVM 点呃 TVM dot lower in that in that step it generates code and together while TensorFlow uses a real time dynamic transformation mode or we call it eager mode each primitive acts on the IR itself and mo motivate the IR in real time after one primitive step we can print the current IR by called the script printer. It looks like the difference between TensorFlow and PyTorch. We believe that the imperative scheduling will bring better ease of the use of the use to the developers and the researchers. So this is our the fourth de design goal: make schedule user friendly and show the result immediately in eager mode. Okay, the last thing. As we remind that, I will talk about the customize part. So it means the decouple, the new design decouple the schedule primitives. That is this slide. TensorFlow provides most use most used primitives for CPU and GPUs. Through these primitives, programmers can make full use of the hardware performance. Currently, we have achieved the same performance as Cutlass and Kublas in NVIDIA GPUs. We have generated the same performance kernel. That's a big achievement. However, for other accelerators, these primitives are not enough. And we, it's all the need to add new primitives to extend the schedule space. TensorFlow provides a completely decoupled implementations of primitives. So that it will depend, it will not depend on any other actual data structures. And the primitive can be completed only through the IR itself. So there is a typical primitive implementation here. I will I, I have showed a sketch of primitives here. First thing we need to check the correctness because not the primitives can not every primitive can act on any IR. So we first thing we need to check validations or we call check correctness. The second thing is to generate the, the wanted statement, wanted sub AST trees. We can use the IR mutator or other parts, just to create the wanted statement. And the second uh, and the third step is simple, replace. It is a existing API, and we can just replace a new statement to the old AST node. After these three steps, our schedule primitive is finished. It's very easy to add a new primitive, just like add a path. So our last design goal, make it easy to use for both users and developers. Make it easy for developers to add their own primitives in TensorFlow. Okay, in summary, TensorFlow introduced two conceptions TVM script and block. The first thing we let, the first thing let us write tensorized programs in Python syntax, while block isolations make it possible to schedule interactive and implement decoupled primitives. It make it possible to optimize tensorized program and customize for special hardware. Together, we solve the three challenges: how to write the program, how to optimize the program, how to customize TensorFlow is the solution. That's all. Thanks everybody for listening. Back. So after listening to the talk, I think someone wants to hands on the TensorFlow and TVM script. So I would like to sh show some simple tutorials in our empty environment Jupyter.
first I would like to import some packages from TVM and uh, NumPy. Yeah, it's good. So first I would like to define the define a T function because it, most people are familiar with the T. Just write a very simple function to a vector add. Okay, after finish it, we can convert the TE to tensor R function. We have a API called create run func and import all the argument we can print it to see what happens probably yeah that's it we can see with t dot block here so it is obviously a tensor function. Now I can just uh, show another way to create a tensor function directed written by TVM script. So also import some packages at TM run func. Now we can just uh, define a function name. I call TIR func because it is written by TIR. And there is two handles here. I mean handle here just like the pointer in the C++, C++. just uh, and, and we can create func buffer or we call it here match buffer to match the handle to a complete buffer. and B has two buffers here. Now we can just write the body range eight with T block. I get a block name B. Now notice that we define the block iterators here. VI is the only block iterators in the block B. And it is obviously a spatial axis. I use capital S here because the capital S is the sugar for the spatial. We can use the full syntax here obviously. And the 8 means the iteration domain is 8. And the i means we just bind the iterator to the outside loop. We can directly write the body here because it is a very simple function and we can detect, auto detect the access region from the body. Because the body is only <coughs> uh, made by the buffer load and buffer store, so it can be de detected. And we can print the function to see what happened to see if it's correct. Yeah, one time success. Okay, let's do a thing. Next, I would like to check if they are the same function or they are the totally same. I use the uh, API here called structural equal. We can to check the, whether two functions are the same. Yeah, it's true. So it means that these two functions are totally the same, even if the name is different or the 
var is different, but they do the actually the same things. Okay, so then I would like to create schedules. So because these two functions are exactly the same function, so I would like to only create a schedule from one function. Create schedule. Here we use tir.schedule, not t schedule, because we use the tensor schedule here. tir func to see what is the s. Yeah, it's a TIR schedule here. So I think it's correct. Now we can get the blocks. Block B by call the S dot get block. And uh, the parameter is the block name here. Block B. So this B is the name B. So I will get block from B. And get the loop I from the S dot get loops of the block. Get loops means we get all the surrounding loops outside the block. Here we only have one loop here, so the loop is i. Next, I would like to split the loop i into three loops. I mean, uh, the i0, i1, and i2. Split i factors. In Tensor, we can split one loops into several loops in only one instruction. But the fact factors is the every loop extent of this. After split it, I would like to show the transformed functions because tensor is an interactive schedule. Yeah, as we can see that there's two position uh, two things to change. The first thing is that we have three loops here. And another thing that the iteration bindings is different because we here use three variables, not only one. Yeah, that is the first step. And the second step, I think, we can try to reorder it. So the API is the totally the same with a t, t, t schedule. So just uh, we can use this as does reorder to reorder these three functions. Sorry, three loops. As we can see, that the order is changed. Okay, finally, I was uh, to show how to run the function onto GPU devices. So just like the TE does, we can just also use bind here. We can find the 0, 1, 2 block index.x and bind the i2 to spread the index dot x and print the result. Yeah, these two loops are binding to the threads and the, the loop type is changed to the thread binding. Okay, the final the thing is to run, try to run these functions. I would like to call this is hex. We can build <coughs> the schedule mode. Mode here means the module. Tog is CUDA. And allocate the, okay, let's check the module is here. Oh, sorry, S.
Okay, let's build the module here. Yeah, we can see that the module has been built. I guess the LVM, LVM here means the host is LVM. I don't know what happens here. But I can try to run it. Range 8. Next, click the A <coughs> and to the B. There was we allocated an empty array and running the CUDA mode. To see the result yeah finally we got the result I guess it, it is obviously correct <coughs> so I think the simple tutorial is here if you want to learn more about the chance AI, please go to the TVM docs and uh, the TVM docs mean has more tutorials and more documents here. So thanks guys. Thanks for your listening. All right. Thanks to Jan for that very good talk on Tensor IR and thanks for joining us uh, very late from mainland China. Appreciate you being here and uh, answering some of the questions that we have from the audience. So Nicholas asks a good question. Uh, how can one integrate a tensorized op into an existing pre-trained network? Documentation shows TVM lowering of a basic sample op. However, it's not clear you can integrate it into a larger DNN. Okay, that's a good question. Uh, TensorIR is only a level of uh, TVM stack, which is at the same level as the tensor expression. So test expression cannot also cannot uh, integrate in, in our uh, pre-trained networks. We have a relay and relay two test expression we call topi, right? And now that we have uh, implementation implementing our uh, test area relay integration, but also we have another tool called Meta Schedule maybe help to use the uh, test area to to uh, run an end-to-end -end networks. Yeah, that's the first question, sorry. Yeah, great, thank you. Matthew also has a really good question. Can TensorIR support scheduling tensor intrinsics of variable size and shape? For example, if COM2D is a tensor intrinsic, if COM2D uh, is a tensor intrinsic, can we perform scheduling like tiling directly inside that intrinsic? Tens uh, I think it's not fully supported of variable size or shape. It's a, uh, it's the same problem of the dynamic shape, I think. Uh, I think it uh, should be so resolved by the relay level or the graph level, not the operator level. Makes sense. Um, and then finally, Chris has a question about, um, uh, do we have any new support, new tensor IR support for loop splitting by factors that are not the visors of the extent? Uh, I guess this pro problem is about the uh, imperfect tiling, I think. Uh, as for the imperfect tiling, we have the first uh, method is the add predicate, like the tensor expression does. But also we have the, we may have the other behaviors like the auto padding or the partial tiles, because thanks to the uh, decoupled primitives of the tensor, we can just implement uh, implement it uh, with some within maybe 100 lines of code. So it's easy to extend the schedule space. Okay. Um, thanks so much, Suyan, for your talk.
It was a very informative talk.